November 8, 1973. In the dim light of the late afternoon, residents of the small Raleigh County community of Minden reported black smoke rising up from a hillside below the former Concho trash dump. The origin of the smoke would not be investigated until November 16. That day, representatives of the West Virginia State Police received a terrible shock when they discovered the burned-out hulk of a Volkswagen Beetle. The vehicle was soon identified as that of Patricia Richmond, who had been missing since the day the smoke was first sighted. At the time, law enforcement had no way of knowing that the charred remains of Richmond's vehicle were merely a preview to the horrors to come. Horrors which would help to ensure that November 1973 would not be soon forgotten. November 1973. At a time when the rest of the United States was mired in an energy shortage and seemed to be speeding headlong into a constitutional crisis, life in and around Beckley, West Virginia, still seemed blessed with a reassuring sense of normalcy. Such was the case for 19-year-old Patricia Richmond when she dropped her daughter off at her mother's home one morning so she could run some errands. As far as anyone knew, nothing out of the ordinary was planned for that day either. However, by nightfall, it would be all too apparent that Richmond's plans, whatever they may have been, had gone horribly awry. Patricia Sue Richmond, known to her friends and family as Susie, was born Patricia Brogan in Raleigh County, West Virginia, on March 23, 1954. In 1971, she graduated from Shady Spring High School and soon thereafter married Bruce Richmond. Patricia and Bruce moved to the Pluto Road area of southern Raleigh County. In March of 1972, they were blessed with a child, a daughter whom they named Angela Arlene. All seemed to be going along well until the afternoon of November 8, 1973. By day's end, Patricia would be missing and within two weeks, the worst would come to pass, as law enforcement and Patricia's family found themselves facing the unthinkable, a brutal murder seemingly without rhyme or reason. Over 45 years later, the events leading up to Richmond's disappearance and murder continue to confuse and confound. The morning of November 8, 1973 started like any other for Patricia. She dropped Angela off at her mother's home in Beaver, West Virginia, at about 10.30 a.m. According to Patricia's mother, Thelma Brogan, Richmond intended to travel to the small community of Crow, about two miles away. Patricia also planned to distribute Amway products to her regular customers along the same rural route. Then, after visiting with a former school friend in Crow, Richmond planned to drive her elderly grandmother to Ransom's Market in Beaver. Rogan recalls that Patricia left her home at 10.45 a.m. She feels certain of this as she remembers Patricia asking her the time before departing. When Patricia left her mother's home, she was attired in a white dress, a blue sweater, white boots, and had a red ribbon tied around a dark black wig. By all accounts, Richmond made her Amway deliveries along the Beaver Old Crow Road and returned in time to drive her grandmother to Ransom's Market in Beaver and then to the Amico service station at approximately noon. Patricia made her morning rounds in her orange 1970 Volkswagen Beetle, West Virginia license plate number 7D-2267. Patricia returned her grandmother to her home, but for reasons that remain unknown, she did not return to her mother's residence or to her own home in Pluto. As the hours dragged by, Thelma Brogan grew more and more uneasy. 
Patricia's mother called the police to report her concerns, but was reportedly told to wait a few days, as her daughter may simply have run off. Hours turned into days, and still no word from Patricia. Her husband, Bruce, felt sufficiently concerned to post a $1,000 reward for information leading to her return. Over 100 of Patricia's friends and relatives organized search parties to comb the area. A helicopter was even employed to scour the local roads for signs of a possible auto accident. Patricia's husband, Bruce, twice went aloft in a friend's private aircraft, hoping to spy the bright orange Volkswagen. What authorities and Patricia's friends did not know was that the first clue to Patricia's disappearance had already been reported, but overlooked. Late on the afternoon of November 8th, the day Patricia was last seen, residents in the small town of Minden, just east of Oak Hill, reported a burning car over the hillside from the Concho trash dump. Neighbors in the area later told Thelma Brogan that they had reported the fire to authorities. It was not, however, until November 16th that the vehicle was investigated. What was found was deeply troubling. Badly burned out, but still recognizable, the blackened hulk was quickly identified as Patricia Richmond's 1970 VW Beetle. Investigators with the West Virginia State Police combed through the charred remains and systematically searched the surrounding area. No trace of Patricia or anyone else could be found. Authorities were also able to ascertain that the vehicle had not left the roadway as the result of an accident, but had instead been rolled over the embankment. Traces of gasoline inside the car also confirmed that the fire had been deliberately set. Within the rubble, authorities were able to find one clue, a singed gold wedding band branded with the name Gold Circle. Richmond's family confirmed that the ring did not belong to Patricia, and authorities were puzzled as to how her vehicle got to such a remote location. Seven days later, and ten miles away, the search for Patricia Richmond came to a tragic and macabre end. Local residents Harvey Williams and James Shea were raccoon hunting on the eastern shore of Plum Orchard Lake near the former coal town of Scarborough. At around 11 p.m., in a cold, swampy area about 50 yards off the road, the two men stumbled upon a badly decomposed body laying near the base of a felled tree. The superintendent of Plum Orchard Lake phoned the state police, who responded to the scene. The advanced state of decomposition made immediate identification impossible. However, upon close examination, a white dress and blue sweater were found the same type of clothing that Patricia Richmond had been wearing the day she disappeared. Although the state of the remains made it impossible to determine if a sexual assault had occurred, Richmond's dress and sweater and bra were found wrapped around her neck. A JanCare ambulance driver later reported that Richmond's face looked as though it had been either eaten away by animals or beaten beyond recognition. Neighbor Howard K. Lilly, who was called upon by Richmond's family to identify the remains, later reported that the body did not look to him as though it had been at the Plum Orchard Lake location for two weeks. Lilly noted that the injuries to Richmond's face were still red with blood and that, to him, the body looked as though it had been where it was found for no more than 24 hours. Along with Richmond's remains, police discovered a black wig partial dental plate, a red scarf, and a gold chain holding a button bearing an emblem of a sailing ship. The black wig was later identified as belonging to Patricia. The red scarf, dental plate, and gold chain, however, did not belong to Patricia. Curiously, a unique pair of white boots Patricia had been wearing the day she disappeared were not found with her remains or in the vicinity of her burned-out car. Richmond's body was removed from the scene and taken to the Tyree Funeral Home in Oak Hill for an autopsy. Patricia's dentist soon provided positive identification through dental charts, and Fayette County Coroner Donald Newell determined that Richmond's body had, most likely, been at the Plum Orchard Lake location for at least two weeks. 
Despite the clothing wrapped around Richmond's neck and the badly mangled state of her face, Dr. Newell determined that the cause of death was two stab wounds in the area of the left breast, which punctured the lung and caused massive hemorrhaging. The murder weapon was never identified. Police were mystified. How had Patricia gotten from Beaver to the small town of Minden and then to the swampy backwaters of Plum Orchard Lake, a round trip of over 30 miles? The media coverage following the discovery of Patricia's remains was heavy, and the constant flow of information finally started to shake loose a few missing pieces of the puzzle. After reading about the discovery of Richmond's remains, two salesmen from the G.C. Murphy store in the Beckley Shopping Plaza contacted the state police. The two men each reported that at around 1.30 p.m. on November 8th, they observed a black male and a petite Caucasian female with dark hair sitting inside of a bright orange VW Beetle. Although the woman did not appear to be in any distress, something about the scene felt juxtaposed. The white female was seated on the passenger side of the car. The unidentified black male seemed to be having trouble with the car as he attempted to drive it out of the parking lot. To the witnesses, his actions were similar to those of someone unfamiliar with the VW's gear and steering system. The man limped the car along and then turned onto what was then U.S. Route 19 and 21, north in the direction of Oak Hill. Thinking he may have recognized the girl, one of the salesmen took time to jot down the car's license plate number. The day after Richmond's body was discovered, the salesman gave the slip of paper to the police. Written upon it were the characters 7D-2267, the license plate number of Patricia Richmond's 1970 Volkswagen. The salesman's note confirmed that sometime between noon and 1.30 p.m. on November 8th, Richmond had driven seven miles north to the Beckley Shopping Plaza. The reason for this large deviation from her planned routine is unknown. Was Richmond simply meeting with friends? Had she decided to spend her lunchtime shopping? Or had she been forced to drive there against her will? Roughly 30 minutes later, at about 2 p.m., three different truck drivers hauling coal towards Thurmond all reported seeing an orange or red Volkswagen driving along narrow Minden Drive. This sighting occurred very near the area where Richmond's burned-out car would later be found. Each driver noted that the Volkswagen was traveling at a very high rate of speed. The vehicle's windows were rolled down, and the drivers observed two black males, one driving and the other in the passenger seat, along with a slight Caucasian female seated between them. Police focused their attention on the area near Minden, West Virginia, where Richmond's vehicle had been found. Authorities had previously learned that the burning car had been reported by area residents on the afternoon of November 8th and one of these residents had an interesting story to tell. This man, whom we will call John Harris, saw the flames from the burning vehicle and went to investigate. At the top of the hill, Harris observed two black males walking up towards the road and away from the burning car. Thinking that there had been an accident, Harris asked the men if anyone had been hurt. One of the men replied no and added that they had been the only ones in the car. Harris offered to drive the man back to the main road, but the men declined and continued on foot. Harris later described the men as young, perhaps 19 to 20 years of age. One of the men was wearing what Harris later described as army pants and was carrying an army jacket. He was estimated to be about six feet tall with a slender build, a medium complexion, and a mild stutter. Harris also noted the man was wearing a square-faced diver's watch with a wide band, as well as shiny black boots. In particular, Harris also noted that the sole of the right boot appeared to be built up three to four inches higher than the other. The other man was described as five feet six inches tall with a stockier build. He also appeared to be wearing a black leather cap with built-in earmuffs. 
Harris also recalled that the second man had thick, bushy, Afro-style hair which protruded from beneath the leather cap. Police compared the accounts given by Harris, the truck drivers, and the salesman at the Beckley Plaza. The descriptions of the two black males seen in or near Patricia's automobile matched almost to a T, yet the descriptions were still too vague to merit the release of composite sketches. In addition to a lack of suspects, authorities also found themselves faced with a complicated and seemingly contradictory set of times and places. Patricia Richmond was last seen here at an Amico service station on Route 1921 in the town of Beaver. It was about noon and Patricia would have been right on schedule. Approximately 90 minutes later, however, Patricia's vehicle and a woman presumed to have been Patricia were seen here in the parking lot of the former G.C. Murphy store in the Beckley Plaza about six miles away. About half an hour later, Patricia's vehicle and, again, a woman presumed to have been Patricia were seen approximately here along Minden Drive near the Concho trash dump. Later that day, the man we call John Harris encountered the two black males walking up the hillside from what would later be identified as Patricia's burning car. The exact time of this encounter has not been made public. However, given the time of year, it could not have been much more than three hours after the car was seen driving along Minden Drive. Strangely, by all accounts, Patricia was nowhere in sight while her car was in flames and no trace of her was reported to have been found in or near the remains of her car. However, the final resting place of Patricia's vehicle and the location where her remains were later found are not in close proximity. The truck drivers who reported seeing the orange Volkswagen on Minden Drive around 2 p.m. all recalled seeing a petite Caucasian female seated between the two black males. If it was Patricia and her car which were seen by the coal truck drivers, how is it that Patricia's car came to be found here, less than a mile away, while Patricia herself was found here, over ten miles away? And, most importantly, if it was Patricia who was seen along Minden Drive, just how and when did her lifeless body end up on the Scarborough end of Plum Orchard Lake? If Patricia was taken to Plum Orchard Lake in her own vehicle, why then was the same vehicle later found ablaze in roughly the same area where it was last seen, again nearly ten miles away? Patricia's friends and family pressed for answers to these questions, but soon started receiving threatening phone calls and letters mailed to their exact address. The verbal and written warnings all carried the same message. Leave the matter alone, or your younger daughter Sharon's life will be in danger. Gradually, the media frenzy surrounding the murder of Patricia Richmond died down. Fearful for Sharon's safety, Thelma and Homer Brogan, as well as Patricia's husband Bruce, remained relatively silent about Patricia's death over the years. Bruce Richmond remarried the following July, and later became a Methodist minister. In 1989, when Patricia and Bruce's daughter Angela was married, Bruce lit a single candle in honor of Angela's absent mother. The investigation into Patricia Richmond's death quickly went cold. To this day, it has yet to thaw out. Today, Patricia's friends and family, as well as law enforcement, cling to the hope that someone may have seen or heard something on the day she disappeared, which may help to fill in some of the many blanks in this case. In particular, authorities would be interested in speaking to anyone who may have seen Richmond or her orange Volkswagen along US Route 19 or any of its outlets on November 8, 1973, between noon and 6 p.m. However, authorities also feel that the resolution to this case may well lie with a simple pair of shoes the white dress boots Patricia was wearing the day she disappeared. The boots were not found either in Patricia's vehicle or at Plum Orchard Lake, and as of 2019, they remain missing. However slim, there is just a chance that these distinctive icons of the 1970s 
may have left a proverbial trail of footprints right to Patricia's killers. Patricia Richmond was last seen alive at about 1.30 p.m. on November 8, 1973. She was seated inside of her orange-colored 1970 Volkswagen Beetle, which was parked in front of the old G.C. Murphy store in the Beckley Shopping Plaza. An unidentified black male entered the vehicle and drove it out of the parking lot and then turned north on Route 19 towards Oak Hill. Patricia's vehicle was seen burning along a hillside near the old Concho trash dump several hours later. Two black males dressed in military attire were seen walking away from the vehicle, but no trace of Patricia was ever found in or near the burned-out car. Two weeks later, Patricia's remains were found along the eastern end of Plum Orchard Lake near the community of Scarborough. The county coroner indicated that Patricia's remains had likely been there since the day she went missing. When she was last seen alive, Patricia was wearing a white dress, a blue sweater, and white boots. She also had a red ribbon tied around a black wig. Her dress, sweater, and wig were later found along with her remains. However, her unique white boots have never been located. Also found with Patricia's remains were a partial dental plate, a red scarf, and a gold chain holding a button bearing an emblem of a sailing ship. The presence of these items remains a mystery as they were not identified as having belonged to Patricia. If you have any information concerning the 1973 disappearance and murder of Patricia Sue Richmond, please contact the Oak Hill Detachment of the West Virginia State Police or Crime Stoppers of West Virginia at www.crimestopperswv.com.